There are different moments in the life of the church when we celebrate the institution of the different sacraments. Hopefully you remember on Holy Thursday at the Last Supper, as we honor the Last Supper, we celebrate the institution of the sacraments of the Eucharist and the priesthood. At Pentecost, we celebrate the institution of the sacrament of confirmation. And the Gospel reading which is given to us today, the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, the actual verse is 23. This is actually one of the few times when the Catholic Church has actually officially interpreted a passage of Scripture. Most people will be surprised to know that the Catholic Church doesn't exclusively interpret all the passages of Scripture. Doesn't say, well, this passage, every passage has to mean this and only this. Because the Church knows that there are multiple meanings and ways in which God speaks to us through sacred Scripture. But there are a few passages that the Church has declared and interpret it officially as meaning something specific. And those passages have to do with the founding of the seven sacraments. And this, these words are interpreted by the Church officially as the words instituting the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. Jesus says, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is a very important passage, and it was quoted at the Council of Trent in the 16th century by the Church Fathers, who said that with these words, spoken directly to the 12 apostles, actually 11, actually 10, Judas was no more, and Thomas was missing. So ten were there, and they receive these words. And it's interesting how they receive these words, because Jesus says to them very clearly, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then Jesus says these things and does these things to the apostles, revealing to us perhaps exactly what God the Father did to him before Jesus came to us, commencing him to go and forgive sins in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus says the same thing to the apostles, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you, receive the Holy Spirit, Receive the power to forgive sins and to retain sins. And then it says he breathed on them, which is the biblical sign of giving life. Giving life. The second story of creation of Adam and Eve, Genesis chapter 2. God breathes into matter and creates Adam and Eve, creates life. And so breath of God is associated with the very presence of the Holy Spirit. At confirmation, we always read that very special reading from the Acts of the Apostles, recounting the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And even though the doors were shut, there was this great wind that appeared in the midst of that room. He breathed on them. And so... This is not an obscure passage of Scripture that can be interpreted in multiple ways, but the Catholic Church says this is meant to be interpreted in one way and one way only. And the Catholic Church says this, the Fathers say this, based on the ancient tradition of how this Scripture was interpreted from the very beginning by the Fathers of the Church, the Apostolic Fathers. Apostolic Fathers means those who knew the apostles and received the interpretation of the teaching of Jesus from the apostles. So, today we celebrate the great sacrament of confession or reconciliation. The sacrament that is 
the greatest news for all of us and one that none of us likes. It's uncomfortable, but it's life-giving. The Council of Trent said that the Sacrament of Reconciliation was given by God out of mercy for those who, after their baptism, fall into sin. What happens? Well, you can't get baptized again. Baptism is for life. So there has to be some way of being forgiven once again. And that happens through the Sacrament of Reconciliation or Confession. And so perhaps we have to renew our own belief in the Sacrament of Reconciliation and the gift that it offers to us. A tremendous gift. There are three, uh, three ways in which often when someone uh, doesn't practice the sacrament of confession, they usually, I usually receive one of three reasons why people don't go to confession, and I'll give those to you now. Reason number one, uh, and the most common reason, I suppose, is when people say, well, I can confess directly to God. I don't need to confess to the priest. And the response to that is basically this scriptural passage. The question is, how do you know you can confess directly to God? It's an assumption, but it doesn't say anywhere in scripture that that's what we should do. Actually, in scripture it says explicitly that the apostles... Jesus says to the apostles, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But if you do not, they are not forgiven. To get into the reasons why God made this decision to go through the apostles, and there are multiple reasons to give. But ultimately, it's biblical to believe that our forgiveness has to be given through the apostolic authority. That was already from the very beginning. The other reason people often give is, um, I'm not that bad. You know, I, I, I'm a pretty good person. I don't do anything bad, so, you know, what's the big deal? And I get it. I mean, we're, we're all not that bad. If, you compare, if we compare ourselves to someone who's really bad, but if we compare ourselves to what God wants us to be and desires for us, wouldn't we agree that we still have a long way to go? And that we, we should receive all the help that God wants to offer us. God's, God, in other words, wants to help us so that it's not so difficult to become a saint. St. Peter says in his letter, again, Scripture, Anyone who claims to be without sin is a liar. Priests don't talk like that anymore, you know. People get offended. But that's scripture. So you, can, you can't get offended with scripture. I think the reason why we sometimes are not aware of our sins is because we don't calibrate our conscience to the teachings of God but rather to the wisdom of this world. And the wisdom of this world tells us, you're not that bad, I'm not that bad, everything's fine. The wisdom of God says, anyone who claims to be without sin is a liar. Come to the mercy of God. Study the teachings of God. Calibrate your conscience according to the examination of conscience based on Scripture. And then we will discover that, yes, I need God's help. I need God's help in this area, in this aspect of my life. Maybe I'm not as patient as I should be. Maybe I'm still quite judgmental. And you saw, see, the thing is, all those things are actually keeping us from peace and joy. They're keeping us from happiness. And God wants to lead us to that joy and peace through the sacrament of 
forgiveness of confession. And the last um, uh, comment that people sometimes give, and this one is not as common, but it does happen sometimes. Sometimes people say to me, how can God forgive me if I can't even forgive myself? Now this happens with people who have are really maybe blaming themselves for something that happened and that, that, that they did. And here is my response to that. I say, we cannot measure God's mercy based on our ability for mercy. So, yes, if we say that God is like us, limited in his mercy, then yes, perhaps it's true that if I can't forgive myself, then, well, God shouldn't forgive me. But God is bigger than us. God is better than us. God is holier than us. And especially if I can't forgive myself, I should go to God so he can expand my mercy, my peace, my generosity, and heal me. You see? So the great gift of God's mercy through the sacrament of confession, even though it's uncomfortable and difficult for us because it requires much humility, it is the fountain of God's grace. And those who drink from it will experience peace, joy, and mercy. Divine Mercy Sunday is also known for the gift of the revelation of Jesus to a Polish nun by the name of Faustina Kowalska, whose statue, little statue I have there next to the flowers. And she received these supernatural gifts, these messages, visions of Jesus, who appeared to her as he appears on that picture up at the front. And he simply called for her to be a witness to God's mercy and to share with everyone that God has so much mercy in store for us and no one's coming to claim it. See, the pain of God is that we're not coming to receive the gifts he wants to offer us. What a beautiful sight, understanding of God's generosity. And so the message was simply to call people to come to God's mercy, to pray for mercy, to receive mercy, and to live mercy. That's one of the keys that unlocks for us the pathway to peace and joy. And so on this Divine Mercy Sunday, I pray for the grace of openness to God's mercy for all of us, especially through the sacrament of confession received on a regular basis by all our parishioners and all our priests, that we may truly continue to grow with God's help and become saints. Amen.